Also at the National Day rally, PM Wong warned that Singaporeans are living longer but not better. Studies have shown that on average, the last 10 years of life are spent in poor health. Researchers at the NUS Academy for Healthy Longevity launched a landmark national study to find out how to slow or even reverse the effects of ageing. CNA's Chloe Teo reports. The truth is, your quality of life when you are older depends on the actions you take today. Singaporeans are living some of the longest lives in the world. But why are we still concerned? Here's the issue. Average lifespans in Singapore are 84 years, but our health spans are only 74. That means a decade will be spent battling illness and frailty. The challenge now, it's adding more life to these years. That's what scientists at the NUS Academy for Healthy Longevity are hoping to change, starting with the landmark national study. When we ask the respondents to define health span as the number of years we spend in good health, only 40% of Singaporeans got that correct. So this means that despite there being a strong interest in visiting a healthy longevity medicine clinic, the awareness is still growing and the term is still unfamiliar. Healthy longevity medicine is a fast-growing field. At its core, it's about extending the number of years you can live free of chronic disease and disability. These clinics have mushroomed in Singapore in just the past two years, offering science-backed assessments like microbiome analysis and advanced health screenings. But are they just hype or could they genuinely help us age better? I went to try it out. The first step, a full body assessment from weight to skeletal muscle mass. The test is completed. Okay, so what do these results tell you, Vanessa? So as you can see, Chloe, you have a really healthy weight. What's a bit low is your skeletal muscle mass, so maybe you can work on strength exercises to improve your muscle mass. Okay. Next, a skin test that can reveal hidden disease risk. So as we age, we accumulate what's called advanced glycation end products in the skin. And in the clinic, we often measure this as a way to look at someone's risk of cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. So we can measure that here with this device. Okay. So as you can see, Chloe, you have the mean reading for your age. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Um, you have a lower risk of cardiovascular disease. You're still in the green. But you want to maintain in the green because if you were to be in the orange or the red, it would mean you have an increased risk of cardiovascular diseases. Mm, I see. Finally, a test that looks simple, but is surprisingly powerful. So what we can do next, Chloe, is a hand grip strength test. Mm -hmm. So this is a really good correlator for mortality, and we often do this in the clinic. Okay. So what we can do is we just stand up, uh -huh. and we hold this. Uh -huh. We hold it by our side in the handshaking position, mm -hmm. and then we're going to squeeze as hard as possible. Three, two, one. Squeeze, 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 ah. squeeze, squeeze. Hi, hi, hi. So why is it important that we measure our hand grip strength? Is it not a very random factor? No, so actually a hand grip strength is a direct indicator of mortality. So if you were to present with a really low hand grip strength, we might think that it's because you are frail or maybe pre-frail. So this is a really good indicator of how strong you are. So Vanessa, now that we've done a few of these checkups on myself, what would you say about the results? <laughs> yeah. So clearly your know, readings are good, but it's really important to keep tracking them as we age. Mm -hmm. It's also nice to see how any lifestyle interventions can actually change our biomarkers of aging. The study also found older adults were more likely to exercise, eat well, and go for annual checks. Key habits that support healthy longevity. Traditionally, we would turn to medicine at the point of disease onset. But in healthy longevity, we're constantly monitoring the progression of someone's aging as then going into interventions, which can be supplements, lifestyle or drugs. While young adults showed interest, but often failed to follow through. Young people do show an interest in healthy longevity, but they often don't follow through with their annual health screening and proactive behaviours. When it comes to ageing, often they occur without symptoms. So really there needs to be um, a bit more of a push to the younger people to get them to do their um, annual health screening. So this could be, you know, incentives or making it more accessible. But perhaps the most unexpected finding, nearly half of all respondents reported experiencing ageism, discrimination based on age. The thing is with ageism, 
When it happens or you feel like you're being defined by your age, you would often disengage. For healthy longevity medicine to be effective, it needs to be intergenerational. So right now it's about removing ageism from any policies and making people feel like they're not being judged based on their age. Medicine is shifting. Instead of waiting for disease to strike, doctors are learning to predict and prevent it. And that could transform how all of us age in Singapore turning those last 10 years of poor health into 10 more years of life well lived. Because healthy longevity isn't just about adding years to life, it's about adding life to years.